Welcome back to GearWire.com. I'm Bill Holland, and today we're going to be looking at Reason. Now, specifically, we're going to be dealing with the Maelstrom today. I'm trying to do a series of basic how-tos on how to set up your Reason interface, because according to the uh, last drum tutorial we did, evidently people are confused, so I figured I would go around and uh, try to make this a little more basic for everybody. So what you're going to do, you'll notice I have the basic mixer and uh, mastering interface. I'm actually going to take this mastering suite off, just have the hardware interface and the mixer. I'm going to go up to create, or you can context click in the window to get this menu. But for right now, I'm going to go up to the menu. And you're going to select Maelstrom Grain Table Synthesizer. And here we have the Maelstrom. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this. Many of you probably have mastered it. Many of you probably have no idea what to do with this. The Maelstrom contains two oscillators. You see oscillator A is on right now, indicated by the yellow. Oscillator B is actually off. What we have also is a shaper, filter B, filter A, filter envelope, mod B, mod A, and of course your pitch control, mod wheel, velocity controls, etc. Now in order to tweak this properly, I'm going to select the Maelstrom and context click or right click for those of you on a PC. Go to create and you're going to go down to the matrix pattern sequencer. Now the matrix pa pattern sequencer is just that. It's a pattern sequencer that really has no built-in sampler or synth. All it does is work as a control. And if you hit the tab key, flip this around, you'll notice this is going to the note CV and the gate CV, which is also a corresponding sequence control on the Maelstrom. So the Maelstrom takes data in through these wires from the gate and the CV. There we go. So flip that back around. Now if you go down to the matrix and you context click again, you'll notice you can randomize the pattern. Now normally we would probably go through these notes and select you know a basic beat, galloping bass line, whatever. But just for this purpose we're going to play it. Okay, so we have a basic pattern. You'll notice up here all we have is a flat sine wave, flat sine wave. Let's let that play for a second. Turn this down a little. Okay, now if you're just trying to get a basic sound and you have an idea of what you want out of the Maelstrom, you can go up to the patch window here. You'll notice a folder. This corresponds to the Windows Save and Open options in uh, Windows menus. If you open this, you'll notice the uh, patch browser comes up. Right now it's searching in current folder. If you want to search in other locations, you can pre-assign user locations or look on local disks. For the moment, we'll stick to the current folder. Right now, you'll see that this symbol over here indicates the Maelstrom. Now, you'll also notice that it's giving us patches for Subtractor, uh, Combinator, uh, and also the NNXT sampler. For this purpose, we want to go up to Show. Right now, it's on all instruments. Maelstrom patches. Here we have all of the synth based Maelstrom patches. And you'll notice if you select these while that's playing, we get a completely different sound. And if you'll go out here, you can actually find out what other types of instruments the Maelstrom itself carries. We can even do, well, I guess there are no sound effects for it. <laughs> But we can do textures and musical effects. But for this purpose, we'll go back to bass. Alright, so as we've seen, you can do anything from basic bass lines to uh, ambient noise with this machine. Now, let me show you a few basic aspects of creating the actual modeling the sound for this. So let's turn this up a little bit. Now if you know anything about synthesizers, you know this A stands for attack, decay, sustain, and release. But for those who don't know, let's show them what it does. I'm going to turn off Zafoon over here, the second one. So now we only have oscillator A running. 
So now none of these are on. You'll notice there's a clicking sound. That's the synthesizer trying to get through. If we increase the delay, you'll notice more of the sound is open. You have to think of this in terms of a graphic waveform. What you're designing here is a graphic waveform. The attack determines how soon this comes in. If we increase attack, that limits how long it takes the sound to actually come into play. You'll notice right here it comes in right away, but, but now it takes a while to get up there. The decay and both the decay and sustain both extend the length of the uh, waveform, and release determines how long it's held for. The same holds true for the second oscillator, if we listen to that. Now you'll notice this oscillator down here is completely different from this one. If you want to change the specific oscillator, if you click on this, you get every option you could possibly want. I believe there's something along the lines of 40 to 50 different waveforms in here. I could be wrong, it could be a different amount, but it's a good amount for what you're doing. And then if you bring this back in, you'll notice them layered together. Now, you'll also notice to the right of these that filter B and A can both be fed to this filter. I mean, filter B can have oscillator A and oscillator B fed to it. In order to limit what goes in there, right now we have both in there, so you'll notice if I hit spacebar and play. If I only want that to affect oscillator B, what I can do is hit this button right here, turn this off yellow, so now it's white. It's no longer routed to filter B. But you'll notice that oscillator A is not affected by that. Now, oscillator A actually has its own filter. Filter A is over here. And obviously you have your low pass, band pass, you know, all these different options for the different modes of filtering. So if I play that again, you'll notice, take this out. So you can also turn this off, by the way, if you want to just control both using filter B. Hit this guy right here. Okay, now you notice what I just did was connect filter B to the shaper. Right now, filter A is automatically connected to the shaper. If I turn that off, here, let's hear what it sounds like with that connected. Turn that off. The shaper can add saturation, clipping, uh, noise, whatever you like. And that can add some really good tones to everything. And again, if you want to add filter B to that, you have to route it through filter B. Sorry, yeah, you have to route filter B to get oscillator B to go through filter B into the shaper. So you'll notice there are arrows indicating what goes through what. So say I want this thing to go through the shaper, but I don't want oscillator B to go through filter B to get to the shaper. If I want to do that, if I set this to low pass, set the resonance to as low as it'll go, zero, and frequency as high as it'll go. That gives me a pure result. But then I have that option if I want to. So if resonance is at zero and the filter is at 127, I'm getting the purest result from this through the shaper that I can get. 
And again, this can also be fed over to filter A if I'm feeding this into the shaper into filter A. So then we get this type of result. Now the Maelstrom also has a filter envelope, which can be used to add even more uh, waveform shaping. Let me show you this. So it's not especially obvious as to what this is doing, but essentially what you're doing is, unlike the uh, attack and decay and sustain and release for amplitude over here, you go over the filter envelope, and this actually affects how filter A and filter B react to each other. Now you'll notice right there the envelope is off, so if I go back to this, and I play it by hitting spacebar, <laughs> And you can also invert that. And you heard some clipping in there, but I mean, that's bound to happen when you're just experimenting. Now you can also add a mod to all of these. There's a mod A, mod B. So let's turn off a uh, B for a second. Turn off B over here and then turn this mod on. So this can, gives you control over essentially what is what works as an LFO in a lot of ways. But you'll notice you have different waveforms. You can use a you know, sine wave, saw wave, square wave. And this gives you more direct digital control over it. So a lot of this ways, a lot of ways, this makes it more like a digital synthesizer than an analog synthesizer. This gives you more control over it that way, and you can affect which oscillators it goes to. So if I put on A and B, and then if I add mod B to both. Obviously right now this sounds pretty horrible, but what I'm trying to show you is the extremes of what you can achieve with this. Now, for those who um, may not be as familiar with this type of synthesizer, I'll go back and look at some of the very basic features really quickly before we finish up here. You'll notice on the left hand side here, we have what's called polyphony. This is the amount of voices you can run one at a time. Now, with our matrix, we have one note played at a time. So if you want to get something really interesting, if you want to make this a mono synthesizer like a classic analog synth, take your polyphony down to one. And increase your portamento. A portamento is the amount of time it takes to shift that other pitch. So increase it to about halfway. So 
So you'll notice as I adjust that, I was adjusting that to give you a better idea of what was going on there, but I'm going to turn mod B off really quickly so you can hear that better. And just to get a clearer idea of that, I'm going to switch back over to the Amazonia base. Now watch what happens when I do that. Now if you really want to get a clear idea of that, if you go into the matrix, the matrix allows you to set up how long the notes are by using um, the various fractions of notes. So right now we're at 1 16th, so every note is a 16th note. I could take that down and actually go so every note is an 8th note. Now I adjust the portamento, and you get a really clear idea of what that does. And really quickly, just for those of you who might not know, you can control your modulation. Uh, there's a mod wheel setting over here that controls everything that's changed by the mod wheel. So when the mod wheel is at its top setting, it meets these settings. Right now, it's closed. So let me play it again. Now here's I increase it. Now these settings take effect. And of course, I have a pitch wheel. And you can set the range for that. All right, well, thank you very much for joining me today. I'm Bill Holland for GearWire.com, and I will be back with more Reason Basics later in the week.